Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fairview Presbyterian Church. I'm the pastor here, the Reverend Emily Zyglinzi. It is good to be together this morning. Uh, I do have a couple of quick announcements, and while I go over them, if you would grab the pew pads and sign in uh, and pass them on down, we would appreciate that. Uh, Vacation Bible School has pivoted to joining with Gerard Presbyterian Church. Uh, VBS is this week, Monday, July 8th through Thursday, July 11th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, even if you missed pre-registering, drop-ins are welcome. Um, next Sunday, the VBS kids will be singing during our worship service, so you'll be able to get a taste uh, of what they learned over the week. Uh, if you purchased items for our scuba VBS that we were planning to have here, have no fear. Uh, we are planning to do scuba VBS next summer and have Gerard join us here um, and are storing all the materials that have already been purchased so we already have a head start on next summer. Uh, when we have a communion Sunday, we do not have joys and concerns, but I do have a couple to pass along to you right now. Uh, on a personal note, I'll ask for prayers for my mother-in-law, Linda, uh, who is in the hospital with a possible minor stroke. Um, so if you would keep her and our family in your prayers, we would appreciate that. Uh, also prayers for Jane. It's wonderful to see her here this morning. Uh, she heads to the hospital tomorrow morning to meet her new little one. Uh, so prayers uh, for her uh, as they add to their family. As God's beloved community, let us stand and greet one another this morning. As you find your way back to your seats, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we pause for the ringing of the bell and then to listen to a prelude by Nathan.
Over the course of six weeks, we are enjoying some light summer fun as worship and the sermons focus on classic childhood toys. As we open up the toy box, we'll learn more about Lightbright, Little Green Army Men, Lego Bricks, Mr. Potato Head, the Rubik's Cube, and Slinky Dog, and see what each one can teach us about faith. During his ministry, Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. So we will engage our childlike wonder and sense of play as we grow in faith this summer. Today, we'll learn about and from the Rubik's Cube. Let us enter that state of childlike wonder by singing together, Jesus Loves Me. Good morning. Will you please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For we will not fear, though the earth should change. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will trust in God who promises to be present with us. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will worship God, who is always with us, leading us and guiding us in truth. Now, please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, number 51, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. <laughs> Thank you. 
You may be seated. All have sinned and fall short of God's glory, but God's grace and mercy never fall short. With confidence in God's unconditional grace, let us confess our sin to God. Would you please join me in the unison prayer of confession? God, there are plenty of things that we allow to erode our faith in you. When life gets stormy, we let our uncertainty cloud our trust in you. We think we know better and start relying on ourselves to be able to weather the rain. Forgive our lack of hope and the disbelief that drowns us. Allow us to hold on to you, our rock, and to build our lives on the foundation of your love. Amen. From a well of unconditional love, God says, I see you. I hear you. You are forgiven. You are loved. Now and always. Amen. At this time, I invite the children to join me up front for the children's time while we welcome them forward with song. All right, so I have this big stick with me. What is it? A ruler. What do we use rulers for? To measure stuff. So I could see if something was like, oh, 25 inches tall. I would look at the number and see. I could see if this pew book was nine inches long. I could see how long your leg was from the knee to the ankle. It's like 13 inches. I could see if something was one foot. How many inches is that? I could measure if something was one cubit. How many inches is that? We didn't learn about that in school. Oh my word. Okay. So we're going to learn about it right now because it's in our scripture reading today. Today, we're going to read the story of Noah's Ark. And Noah gets instructions from God, and God says, I need you to build it 100 cubits wide, or whatever the number is in the scripture reading. I can't remember right now off the top of my head. But God says, I need you to build it this many cubits wide, and this many cubits long, and this many cubits tall. But we don't measure things in cubits anymore, so we don't know how big that is. But this is what they used to do. A cubit was like if you put the ruler by your elbow... And then you put your hand all the way down, and where your middle finger touches was a cubit. So, right, that would be different. So, like, for me, a cubit is 17 inches. But what about if one of you sticks your elbow out? Let me see. We line it up with your elbow, and then your middle finger's at, like, 13 inches. So if Madeline builds something that's 10 cubits tall and I build something that's 10 cubits tall, it's going to end up the same? No. But the men who were doing construction, in general, it was 18 inches. One cubit was about 18 inches. And then they would build stuff. And in our scripture reading today, Noah's going to build the ark based on those measurements. But there's some other measuring that happens in the story, too. Not with a ruler. God is measuring faithfulness. 
How do you think we measure something like faithfulness? We don't know. What God is looking for is for someone who wants to follow God, who is listening to what God says. In the story today, God is looking for someone who is not being violent or murdering people, because there are a lot of people who are doing that. But Noah measures up in faithfulness because Noah wasn't doing those things. And we want to measure up in faithfulness by doing good things too, by listening to what God tells us, by reading our Bibles, by saying a prayer before meals. That helps us to measure up in faithfulness to what God wants us to do. Okay? All right. We learned something random and fun this morning, right? A cubit is how many inches? 18. Awesome. You can add that to your facts with 12 inches as one foot. Something new today. All right, let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for helping us to be faithful to you. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. If you didn't grab a clipboard, you can grab a clipboard there. Let us pray. Lord, speak to us your word, that hearing it, our hearts may be transformed and our feet follow your path. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 5 through 22, and chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humans was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humans on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the humans I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits, its width, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every, of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. 
Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. And the flood came, and then the waters receded. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow, my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Rubik's Cube puzzle was invented in 1974 by a 29-year-old Hungarian architecture teacher named Erno Rubik. Though media first circulated a story about Rubik designing the cube to help teach students about three-dimensional objects, Rubik himself later acknowledged that he purposefully set out to design a puzzle based on geometry. The 27 tiny cubes called cubies produced a truly challenging puzzle. Each carried one of six colors and when assembled, they formed a square. Rubik's challenge was figuring a way to allow the cubies to slide and rotate alongside one another while still holding together as a unit. His key insight lay in realizing that if the individual blocks hinged on a rounded core, they could move freely while still maintaining the shape of the cube. In the Soviet Union, the marketing possibilities for the toy were limited, to say the least. But the puzzle finally broke through the Iron Curtain and was released worldwide six years later. By 1982, over 100 million cubes had been sold. And by 2007, over 250 million cubes had been purchased, making it one of the best selling toys in history. Meanwhile, the fascination with the Rubik's Cube puzzle continues to grow. Disciples of the cube have met annually since 1982 to test their skill and time themselves as they search for the solution. The first recognized world record to completely solve the cube was 19 seconds. That had shrunk almost in half by 2006, down to 10.48 seconds. And the reigning world record set last year in 2023 is 3.13 seconds to solve the cube. Though not a world record holder yet, Audrey has recently got into the Rubik's Cube and she is gonna grab a cube here off of our display and solve the cube before I finish the sermon. 
A few other interesting world records to note. The one-handed record is 6.05 seconds. The blindfolded record, they look at the cube first and then are blindfolded to solve it, is 12 seconds. The record for using only your feet to solve the cube is one minute and 18 seconds. We don't try that one at our house. And the record for the number of cubes solved in a 24-hour period is 3,390. One of the earliest ads for the Rubik's Cube puzzle boasted that the cube had 43 quintillion possible moves, but only one solution. So the actual number of permutations of moves is 53 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274 billion, 489 million, 856,000. But in spite of that huge number that I had to write out so I would be able to say it this morning, every cube, Every cube can be solved in 27 moves or less. The key is knowing the right moves to make, the right algorithms, because there are no shortcuts. Some have tried shortcuts, removing and reapplying the colored sticker squares, or disassembling and reassembling the cube. But in the end, the toy teaches hard, honest work and the importance of making the right turn. In our scripture reading today, Noah makes some right turns. We don't know Noah's exact actions, but we do know that Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. We might be able to deduce which actions he wasn't doing, those of his fellow humans, including his dad, which included so much corruption, violence, and murder that God decided to wipe out everything that God had made. But Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God and Noah did all that God commanded him. Now, there are no conversations in the whole of the narrated, narrative, narrative. I only needed Michael to read the parts of God while I read the narrator pieces. There was no need for someone to read Noah's parts because he did not speak during that whole story. God instructs and Noah obeys. Noah makes the right turn, and perhaps this is what makes him blameless. But following God's instructions was no small feat. He was tasked with building an ark, not just a small boat, but a huge ark. Like I told the children this morning, Noah's dimensions are given in cubits which was based on the length of the arm from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger, or roughly 18 inches. Using that measurement, the arc would measure approximately 450 by 75 by 45 feet. Again, no small boat to build by hand. And then he was charged with creating and maintaining conditions under which all God's creatures could thrive and continue the species. Noah became one heck of a zookeeper overnight. God also makes some right turns. I mean, of course, God is God. God chooses to establish a covenant with Noah and humanity that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. The sign of this right turn 
will be a rainbow in the clouds, a beautiful signal of the covenant between God and the whole earth and its inhabitants. This is the only biblical covenant between God and all living creatures. For God promises everyone, Noah and his family and all humanity, the animals, all living creatures, the earth, all of creation, everyone and everything that God will not destroy like this again. This covenant signifies that God is in a sacred relationship with all humanity and all creatures, that God desires our and their flourishing. The covenant is also one-sided. Neither Noah nor his family nor any of the animals or the birds or the fish or the creepy crawly things have to promise anything in return. God made an unconditional promise to the whole of creation. God made a right turn, and we have simply to receive this promise. And then we are called to make right turns as well. We know that sometimes there are surely easier ways, dishonest ways, cheating ways, immoral ways, but that God calls us to follow Noah and God and make the right turn. Remember the principle of the cube. Every turn affects the whole cube until you eventually get to the solution. Every turn affects our lives until we eventually get to heaven. So may we always turn toward truth and fairness, towards justice and compassion, toward forgiveness and love. Like the Rubik's Cube puzzle, we have many possible moves each and every day. Maybe not as many as 53 quintillion, but definitely different options. But we are called to make the right turn, to make the right choice, to be blameless, even in the midst of a corrupt generation, to follow God faithfully and find favor with God, to turn toward love always. May it be so. Amen. Our song of response this morning is number 65 in the white songbook, Seek Ye First. Would you please stand as you're able as we sing together?
You may be seated, and I'll ask the elders who are helping to serve communion this morning to please come forward. Sisters and brothers, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Women, men, youth, boys and girls, come. The scriptures say they will come from north and south and from east and west and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites all those who love him. Come to the feast which he has prepared, all are welcome. It is truly right and just to give you thanks in every time and in every place, almighty God. We give you thanks for the gift of creation and especially for the gift of our life. We are grateful that you have made us in your image and that you pardon us when we act as though you have no authority over our lives. We are grateful that you sustain us in your great love. You are holy and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who was born of Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of the life that we know. You anointed Jesus Christ with your spirit to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to give sight to the blind and to liberate the oppressed, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. In his baptism, suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. Remembering the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your people, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, so that the bread we share and the cup we bless will be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with Christ and one with our neighbors and one in service to all the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together as our Lord and Sa Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread. And after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant. It's sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And so every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember Jesus Christ until he comes again. This morning, we are serving communion on trays. So that simply means trays of bread and then grape juice will be passed to the pews. You'll take a piece of bread or a cup of juice and hold onto it. And we will eat or drink together once everyone has been served. On the trays of bread, we also have gluten-free crackers that are sealed in baggies for anyone who may need those.
This is the bread of life. This is the cup of salvation. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, we give thanks that you have invited us to this table. We give thanks that you have received us as members of the body of Christ and have affirmed us as a community of faith. Lead us to live as faithful and dedicated disciples in service to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This week, we will prepare to serve somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 families at the food pantry next Saturday. The fellowship hall will be arranged Friday morning. Non-perishable items from our shelves will be placed on the tables and organized. A rented U-Haul truck will pick up almost a literal ton of food from Second Harvest Food Bank downtown. A crew of volunteers will unload that truck adding the non-perishable items to the table and putting the perishable items into the commercial refrigerators and freezers that we have. Only right now, two of our commercial grade freezers are broken. They are over 14 years old, no longer manufactured, and so their replacement parts are no longer manufactured. And so Session has approved up to an emergency $5,000 from the mission budget to purchase new or used freezers. 
We're in the process of shopping around right now. So we can continue to offer things like frozen ground meats on a monthly basis, but also frozen turkeys at Thanksgiving and frozen hams or turkeys at Christmas. These freezers are really vital to the work that we do as a food pantry in helping to feed our community. Your offering helps to support all of the good work that the food pantry does. So thank you for the ways you contribute so we can continue to share God's love. Let us pray. Almighty God, we dedicate ourselves to love and serve you. Receive these gifts we offer, and with these gifts accept the offering of our lives, that we might see the world through eyes of love and be moved to make the right turn to share your love. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 376, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus.
Deciding to follow Jesus is one really important right turn. As we head out into the week, may we continue to make right turns that bring us closer to God. And now may the God who loves you take delight in your living. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. And may the God who sends you send you now with great joy. For the very one who created you and redeemed you goes with you still. Amen.